Alright lads, today we're going to be taking a look at the BF109E7. This is a very old premium in the Japanese tech tree. It sits at rank 2 and it's currently at a battery rating of 2.3. Despite it on screen showing 3.0, it's actually been dropped down to 2.3 very recently. Which in my opinion, makes this plane probably one of the best grinders in the game right now. At least for Silver Lions, it's basically just the new seal clubbing premium plane. I have no idea why it's gone down to 2.3 at all. The BF109E series are probably one of the most iconic aircraft in real life and in game. And especially the BF109E7, the E7 basically meant that it got the upgraded cannons. So you basically get the late war high explosive round for the cannons. I really don't understand why it's gone down to 2.3. I played it pretty much all last night and I don't think I had a game where I had less than 2 kills. So, And you guys know I'm a pretty bad pilot. So you guys are probably going to get great results in it. Anyway, as I said, this is a rank 2 battery rating 2.3 fighter located in the Japanese tech tree. This thing used to be overshadowed by the F4U Corsair in the Japanese tech tree, but that has since been moved up to battery rating 3.0, making it significantly less effective at basically being a seal clubber. Recent changes, however, have made the BF109E7 a much stronger aircraft. Not only has its battery rating been decreased to 2.3, its silver line modifier has also been drastically increased, making it one of the best silver line grinders in the game, after the USS Moffat of course. And the best part about this plane is its pretty low cost of 1000 golden eagles. This is incredibly cheap and very approachable for newer players. So should you buy this plane? Well that's the point of this video, I guess you guys are going to have to stick around to find out. Anyway lads, let's not waste any more time, let's get into the flight characteristics. It's worth pointing out that the BF109E series are technically energy fighters. This typically means they've got rather powerful engines, and instead of turning in the horizontal like a Spitfire or a Japanese Zero, these planes typically use vertical manoeuvres, draining their opponents of energy before falling on top of them and getting a guns kill. While you certainly can do this at this battle rating, most of the enemies you will be fighting will try to turn fight you. This isn't a massive strength of the BF109E series. They aren't as agile as the later F series of BF109, but you aren't exactly a flying brick. However, it is worth remembering, it's always better to try an energy fight, so try and keep your speed up as much as possible. Don't get into a dogfight with a Zero or a biplane, obviously. Well, I think that goes without saying. Anyway, this plane is powered by the very famous Daimler-Benz DB601, the engine was actually inverted, allowing it to fit a cannon as well as two rifle caliber machine guns in the nose. This was done to improve the accuracy of the weapons. Compared to wing mounted guns, a nose mounted setup allows the pilot to be a lot more accurate, as the guns are all in line with the pilot. While on this version of the BF109 we don't have the nose mounted cannon, we still do have the nose mounted rifle caliber machine guns. Anyway, back to the engine. And due to it being an inline engine, it obviously requires water cooling. This isn't a positive or a negative really, however it does mean that you can lose water pressure in a match. Basically if you take engine damage you can lose the coolant, which will slowly destroy your engine. This sort of issue isn't really present in a lot of the American radial engine fighters, because they obviously use air cooled engines compared to the inline water cooled engines. This doesn't really matter in game, it's just another thing that can go wrong. Anyway, the engine produces 1135 brake horsepower, which for battery rating 2.3 is very powerful. Again, I have no idea why this has gone down in battery rating. You're basically fighting biplanes or the very early monoplanes in this thing. It's basically a seal clubber's, well, wet dream. I don't even know if you can go further than a wet dream, but it certainly is a right up there. And this engine does give the plane a climb rate of 17.8 meters per second which for its battery rating again is incredibly high. Basically take off with full power and put it in a 15 to 18 degree climb and you will outclimb pretty much everything on the battlefield. You can also reach a top speed of 570 km per hour at an altitude of 5000 meters. But because you are going to be playing in rank 1 and 2 matches, 
Climbing to 5,000 meters isn't really needed. You obviously aren't going to be facing LF Mark 9s, so getting loads of altitude isn't particularly necessary. I said briefly about the turning performance of the BF-09 E7. It's not amazing, especially for low tier where, it, again, it's mostly just biplanes and other sorts of smaller monoplanes, so don't try to turn against them unless they are at a significant energy disadvantage. But enough about the engine and the boring stuff, let's get on to the firepower. Firstly, the rifle caliber machine guns. If you remember, mounted in the nose of the aircraft. You have two of these guns, firing the 7.92mm round. You carry 1000 rounds of ammunition per gun, with a fire rate of 1200 rounds per minute. You have a range of ammunition types available for these guns, but I mainly use the omnipurpose rounds. This comes equipped with armor piercing tracer, armor piercing, armor piercing incendiary, as well as adjustment incendiary bullets. This gives you a good mix between tracer as well as incendiary rounds, which are crucial for setting fire to enemy planes. You carry far more rifle caliber machine gun ammunition than you do for the cannon rounds, so you will have to get good at using these rifle rounds, because especially in a late end of a game, these will be your main firepower components. You will lose that cannon firepower very quickly. This is mainly due to the fact that your 20mm cannons, the MGFF Ms, only have 60 rounds of ammunition per gun, with a combined ammunition count of 120 rounds. And with a fire rate of 520 rounds per minute, those 60 rounds do go very quickly. It's because of this that this plane is quite good for teaching new players discipline, because if you just hold down the left mouse button, you're going to burn through that ammunition like it's the German currency after World War I. But these 20mm are very powerful. The Slash M modification, as I said earlier, does allow you to shoot the late war belts, the manga shot rounds as I believe they're called. However, there's around a 99% chance that that pronunciation was wrong. But again, I'm an Anglo, so I'm going to anglicise everything I say. The way I see it, you can either use the Ur target belts, which contains fragmentary incendiary tracers, high explosive incendiary, also known as manga shot, as well as armor piercing high explosive. This is great for absolutely obliterating anything that flies, but you do have one other alternative in my opinion, and that is the tracer belt, which is pretty much just all fragmentary incendiary tracer. I typically do use the Ur target belt, so I just find it a little bit more consistent. However, the choice is up to you. So that's pretty much it for the performance and the firepower. There's not really too much to say about this plane. It is a rank two premium after all, so it's not got anything really fancy, but because it's gone down in battery rating very recently, actually in the last couple of days as I'm making this video, it's fastly becoming probably one of the best seal clubbers in War Thunder. Especially if you're fairly competent at flying points and you know how to do manoeuvres and not do stuff. Basically, if you know how to energy fight and not turn fight everything you see, then you're going to do amazing in this point and make a lot of silver lines. And if you've not really grinded out the Japanese tech tree, it's a great little premium for getting started. It has by far taken the spot of the F4U Corsair as the best low tier Japanese grinder. And one other thing, of course, is because the Japanese tech tree has such a high win rate at low tier, you also get quite a lot of rewards. Low tier Japanese is very fun, as well as pretty dominant. So again, you get a lot of kills in game and your team tends to win a lot. So it's just great all around. Anyway, lads, if you enjoyed the review, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. And if you really loved it, consider becoming a channel member like T, Biff Webster, Tomato Salad, Deboa LX, Just Someone, Destroyer1805, Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonso. Thank you very much for becoming members, lads, and I'll see you in another review.